Welcome to week five. I hope these lectures are starting to feel a bit repetitive, meaning you're beginning to see that math is the study of the things we count and measure. This week we'll focus a bit on uh, measuring things that yield fractions instead of whole numbers. Um, but the nine quantities won't change. Some of the units might change a little. I mean, the units won't change, but we might use enough precision to get us um, some fractions. Um, if we measure with larger units, we're more likely um, to need to look at parts. For instance, when we measured our calendar, it took 144 square inches, or we could call that one square foot. But if we had measured it in square yards, it would have taken one-ninth of a square yard. So the larger the unit, the more likely you are to um, have fraction as your measurements. So let's try a couple more. We measured our strawberries in grams and ounces, and we said there were 370 grams. If we had measured in kilo kilograms, we'd have 370 thousandths of a kilogram. Again, we measured our, um, when we measured our strawberries in ounces, we got 15 ounces. If we had measured in pounds, if we had literally put it on a pound scale, it would have read 15 sixteenths of a pound. And then when we counted our money, we had 144 pennies. If we had talked in, um, counted them in dollars, we'd have had $1.44, or $1.44 hundredths of another dollar. And finally, we measured the sh uh, height of our shelves, and we got 245 millimeters. which would have been 24 and 5 tenths centimeters, or 24 and a half centimeters, and 245 thousandths of an entire meter, so some part of an entire meter. <coughs> Excuse me. So the, when you measure in real life, there'll be reasons why you choose one unit or a different unit. And it might be um, because you're buying fuel and they sell it in gallons in America or in liters in Canada. Uh, but when you're measuring in class, you can choose really to end up with fractions or decimals or whole numbers or big whole numbers by sort of manipulating the units you use. Your goal is by the end of fifth grade that the students are familiar with all the different units, and so it makes sense to use um, some larger units when you're doing fractions and decimals, and smaller units when you're doing whole numbers. Now uh, let's see. When we measure, whether we measure in units that yield whole numbers or fractions or decimals, we're still going to ask the same kinds of questions. We're going to put things together, combine them and compare them, and ask the same questions. Um, to solve our, to solve, to get our answers, to solve our problems. <clears throat> and when we measure things in multiples, it doesn't matter if we get whole numbers or fractions. We're still going to end up asking the same questions to talk about multiples or groups of them for our multiplication and division problems. So let's get a little bit um, specific about measuring and working problems with fractions. So remember the weight. The strawberries in the basket weigh 15 sixteenths of a pound instead of a ounces. And the basket weighed 2 sixteenths of a pound. And we asked how much do the strawberries weigh? So let's see. Um, 16 ounces is 1 pound. So 1 pound is where you see the 16. And so you can see. 2 sixteenths of a pound, 4 sixteenths of a pound, 6 sixteenths of a pound. Look between the 6 and the 8. Can you see 7 sixteenths of a pound? Look between the 6 and the 7. Can you see 6 and a half sixteenths of a pound? Or you could break the pound into 32 pieces. If you broke it into 32 pieces, that instead of saying 6 sixteenths, you would count each of those smaller spaces. You'll see there's 32 spaces. And by the time you get to the 6, you will have counted 12 of the 32 spaces. 
So 30 seconds, not a fraction you often use in third or fourth grade, maybe by fifth grade. But you can see them here on the actual scale. So let's see. Back to our 15 sixteenths. Do you see my bottom red arrow at 15 sixteenths? The reason that's kind of thick is because that's where the um, the strawberries are on the scale, and that's the scale marker saying it's at 15 sixteenths of a pound. And if I back up 2 sixteenths to 14, 13 sixteenths, I find out how much the strawberries weigh without the 2 sixteenths of the basket, 13 sixteenths of a pound. And my subtraction sign for the difference between still works with fractions. Remember my area. If I have four calendar pages with a ninth of a square yard covering each one, how many square yards will it take to cover all four pages? Well, suppose I want to put all the calendar pages for the whole year. Oops, here's a second question. Suppose I want to put all the calendar pages for the whole year. Then I would have a ninth of a, yard, a square yard times all 12 pages, right? So 12 times one ninth. So here we go. On the right, you'll see my yellow square yard. Pretend that's a square yard. Obviously, a square yard would not fit on my page, so I had to scale it down. But you can easily make one with, um, with um, bulletin board paper, a square yard. And you could break it into nine pieces and call each one one-ninth of a square yard. You'll find that you can also call that a square foot or 144 square inches. Hmm, beautiful, you're teaching what we call conversions. But right now, let's look at it at a ninth of a square yard. You need four of them. You see me counting the one, two, three, four with my red arrows, giving me four ninths of a square yard of area. For my second problem, I needed 12 of those ninths. So do you see I needed a second square yard? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve square, twelve um, ninths square yards, which I can write as 12 ninths, but I think you can see it's a square yard and three ninths of another one, so I can call it a square yard and three ninths of another one if I'd like. Nothing like concrete things to actually help the students to see the ninths of a square yard and to see 12 of them. Clearly see 12 of them and clearly see nine of them make a hole with three left over. All right, let's meet a few more units that um, lend themselves to fractions. Let's see, how about the foot? If we divide the foot into two pieces, we can call each one one half, and we can write it one divided by two, or one fraction line two, or one cut into two pieces, one half. And you can see that a half of a foot is square inches. Now, if I divide my foot into four pieces, in other words, I take each of my halves and cut them in half again. Then I end up with four pieces, and I'll call each one a fourth. Do you see my yellow arrow at the six-inch mark sitting on top of my red arrow? That's to show that two-fourths is this of a foot is the same length as one-half of a foot. I can divide my foot into thirds and into sixths and into twelfths. I cut my thirds, I can divide it into three pieces, and if I take each of my thirds and split them into two pieces, I get sixth, and if I take each of my sixth and cut them into two pieces, I get my twelfths. I guess if I had taken each of my third and cut them into four pieces, I also would have gotten twelfths. And what I love about twelfths of a foot is it's an inch. In my mind, I can see an inch and think of it as a twelfth of a foot. So when people talk about fractions, thirds and fourths and sixths, I can always think of them as how many inches, which is how many twelfths when I'm talking about a foot. And I can generalize that to twelfths of other things too. Well, well, you guys will get more practice with that as the weeks go on. All right, so here's a couple of activities you can do to introduce those uh, fractions of a foot. You can print some paper rulers and then actually allow the students to fold them in two and then two again or in three and then two and then two again to get your halves and fourths or thirds and sixths and twelfths. 
Or you could ask Jonas to mark every six inches of a ruler, and it would show that it took two of them, so we would call each of those a half foot. Then you repeat it, give him another ruler, and ask him to color every three inches, and see how many it took. It'll take four, so you'll call that a fourth, and you could do that for four inches or two inches or one inches. It's just a different way. Instead of folding a full one in half to see how many you get, you would color every six inches to see how many you get. It's just two different activities, both fun for children. You can do the same thing for inches and yards and miles. You can simply print paper inches and do the same activity. Or you could, um, you could have the kids give them a paper yard. In order to give them a paper yard, you might need to cut up a poster or some bulletin board paper. And then they could fall color every 12 inches and they'll take three. It'll take three of them to color the whole thing. So a foot is, or 12 inches, is one third of a yard. So the first one is folding and the second one is cutting. I'm, I'm sorry, the first one is folding and the second one is coloring. So the two different activities, types of activities, but with different units. And then you could talk about fractions of a of, um, mile. Now you can't actually see a mile, but you can talk about it in your town, like in Philadelphia. It takes 10 numbered streets. So from 3rd Street to 13th Street is approximately a mile. And you could talk about, since that's 10 blocks, you could talk about a tenth of a mile if you want to. So you'd use the same language, but when you, but you won't be able to see it or fold it or color it. You'll only be able to talk about it. And that's why it's important that you do the smaller units first so that you have the language to talk about it. All right. You might want to draw some models. So for um, a foot, you might, or an inch even, you might use a rectangle that resembles the ruler to, for your foot or for your inch. You can use a horizontal number line for distances. That's a beautiful one. And you can just draw a line as long as a foot, start to mark it up. And then you could use narrative sentences and number sentences for your work. So your narrative sentences would look like the, um, my computer screen um, measured 13 and a half inches. That's what I call the first sentence of every word problem. So please write a narrative sentence every time you measure something. And then number sentences are more interesting when you start to add two of them. So when you write the, the, the height of my computer screen is um, seven and three-fourths inches, and the um, width of my computer keyboard is, um, is nine and a fourth inches, if I lie them out next to each other, they would weigh flop inches, and you could add those. And so you could write those narrative sentences, and then you could write the number sentences. Seven and three-fourths plus nine and one-fourths equal 16 and four-fourths. You might call that 17 inches. All right. Let's meet some more units of volume. When you look at the gallon, see my picture of the gallon? It has the red cover in it. Then you could have a half a gallon, a fourth a gallon, an eighth of a gallon, and a sixteenth of a gallon, a half a gallon we call a gallon, a fourth of a gallon we call a quart, an eighth of a gallon we call a pint, and a sixteenth of a gallon we call a cup. Again, you can take a gallon of water and fill a bunch of pints. You'll see it takes eight of them. Or you can take the pint container and start to fill the gallon and you will see it takes eight of them to fill it up. We have cups. They also measure volume. And then we have half cups and third cups and fourth cups and eighth cups. And we even have a sixteenth of a cup called an ounce, I believe. And then we have tablespoons. We have half tablespoons. We have a third of a tablespoon, but that's a teaspoon, so we just call it a teaspoon. We have halves of teaspoons, thirds, fourths, and eighths. I think you've probably seen all of these in your kitchen. They make beautiful, beautiful measuring instruments in your classroom. I think I already mentioned you could fill a gallon with an unmarked half gallon or an unmarked pint container, and you'd see it take eight. And so you would call it one eighth. Um, you could fill a cup with unmarked half cups or unmarked third cups and see how many it takes. And then you can fill the measuring cup by repeatedly filling it with, like, say, teaspoons or tablespoons. I'm sorry for the double periods everywhere. I'll fix that for next semester. So again, physical, concrete activities with volume to introduce the fractions. 
Third graders love this stuff. It's so much more fun than looking at those funny symbols in the textbook and not quite knowing what they mean. When you um, model rectangle, uh, model volume, you might model, model it with rectangles, but those rectangles shouldn't look like a ruler now. They should look like a gallon container or look like um, a cup container or a spoon. Vertical number lines work well because you'll see those vertical number lines right on the side of a gallon or a cup measuring, um, measuring utensil. Yeah. Narrative sentences and number sentences as always. All right, how about an hour? That's time, so we've moved to time. So we're meeting most of the nine quantities now, right? We've just met uh, volume and we met some lengths. We've already met some weights and some. now we're meeting some time. So hours, halves of hours, quarters of hours, thirds of hours, sixth of hours, and twelfths of hours. You might not know those off the top of your head past a half and a quarter, but you could figure out a third and a sixth and a twelfth of an hour pretty quickly by Splitting the hour, the 60 minutes, in halves and halves and halves again for eighths or thirds and halves and halves again for your thirds and sixths and twelfths. Or, um, that's what my first one says, or you can ask the students to color every 30 minutes or col and see how many it takes. Color every 15 minutes, color every 20 minutes, color every 10 minutes, or color every 5 minutes. you got to change colors every time you do 5 minutes, every time you do 10 minutes. Count how many it takes, and that becomes your fraction. I bet some of you have never thought about twelfths and sixths and thirds of hours, so it might be a nice one for you to play around with. How would you model an hour or fractions of an hour? Clearly with a circle. How could you choose anything else? The nice thing is students can learn that um, a five-minute slice, right, from between the zero and the one, that's a five-minute, not a slice. Yeah, you call it a slice or a wedge. That five minutes is a twelfth. Another good twelfth besides the um, inch. Yeah. And then narrative sentences and number sentences, as always. Oh, my. How about a circle? A circle, when we measure a circle, we say it's 360 degrees. If you cut it in half, it's 180 degrees. Cut it in a fourth or a quarter, it's 90 degrees. And we talk a lot about 180 degree angles and 90 degree angles in in a geometry. We also talk about 45 degree angles, 30 degree angles, 15 degree angles. I should have put 10 degrees in here. I don't know why I didn't. I guess because it would be 1 36th of a circle and that's hardly a fraction we use, but we could in elementary school. And it would be sort of um, for, from the 80 to the 90, each of those angles on the protractor later. Yeah. So can you imagine folding these, folding them, folding them, folding them, folding them? Or could you imagine Imagine coloring 30 degrees, coloring 30 degrees, coloring 30 degrees, counting them up. Both of those activities would work for fractions. And those are described here. Do you want to pause and read in detail? Obviously, you'd use a circle to model a circle. Yeah, but, but you're introducing each of those 30-degree wedges will be an angle, so you're introducing angles. Um, I think that's unnecessary in third grade, but by fourth and fifth grade, depending on what state you live in, what the standards ask for, but by fourth or fifth grade in every state, I think you're using circles. All right. So the nine quantities, they never change, do they? We're measuring new things, but the nine quantities never change. The questions never change. Addition and subtraction or multiplication and division. But now it's operations on not on whole numbers, but just on numbers in general. Any kind of fractions will work, right? Um, same questions. Who's counting? What are they counting? How are they organizing them? They're either organizing them in parts or they are organizing them in equal groups. Oops. And that's the end of our week five fraction unit. This week, you guys will be measuring some fractions, asking some questions, and next week you'll be answering them. All the same strategies except with fractions because we're measuring more precisely than we did in our first four weeks. Have another fun week of math.